Welcome back to another episode of Paint Society, the channel where learning doesn't stop when the video ends. My name is Brian and today in this episode, we're gonna show you how to get the most successful job out of using a store-bought spray can. Don't overthink it, it's just paint. And thank you for joining me once again on this episode. This episode is dedicated to the guys in the garage that just want to make their car or project look a little bit better. And we're going to be using these spray cans to do so. And the whole point of this project is to keep expenses down as much as possible, but still get a pretty good looking job out of our home garage. So we went over to AutoZone and we got all the paint that we were gonna need, just like you can do. You can get these from O'Reilly's, Advance, they're gonna sell the same thing. So basically from start to finish, we have a prep cleaner. We're gonna be using this. Then we have our primer. We'll show you how to spray it and then how to prepare it for our base coat. Now, what I did is I went ahead and just picked the coolest color. We're not trying to uh, match anything here. We're just trying to show you the application process. And then from there, we went ahead and picked up their clear coat. So we're all within the same brand. So all we're gonna be using for today to get prepared is a 600 crit, which is a K600 crit. And we have a little bit of a sanding block let me show you now how to apply and get this paint ready on this fender. So we're here in the home garage and this is the panel we're gonna be using. Now this is actually from work and this was damaged over in this area over here. So it's a great donor panel because mostly all of the panel is in great condition. So the first step you're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna be using our prep spray. Now the prep spray is going to clean the panel. So what we're gonna do is just spray it on the whole entire panel. Now, in this particular situation, the steps that we're going to follow is if you have a panel that has no damage, so let's say this is a brand new panel, or let's just say that the paint is a little bit faded, okay? The first step you're gonna wanna do is get it nice and clean, because the second step we're gonna be sanding, and we don't wanna sand any of the dirt into the panel. You can see that's some of the dirt that we took off of this fender, and if we were to sand that into the actual paint itself, well, we're already gonna start off on the wrong foot. So the next step is going to be to use our K600. Now this is equivalent to 600 grit. The reason why I like this, it's a very user friendly, do it yourself or can use this. Now the paint on this actual project is very, very in very, very good condition. So all we're gonna look to do is scuff it up. Now beforehand, I did a little bit of a scuff. So that's why it's a touch dull already. But when we scuff it up, what we're trying to do is degloss it, okay? If you come over into this area, you can see there's still a little bit of gloss all in the panel. So if we take our scuffing pad, if you pan in here, you can see how it becomes completely matte or flat. That's what we want. We want the whole entire panel to become flat. And while, while it's becoming flat, what it's doing is it's scratching the panel very fine with a 600 grit, right? But it's also creating an adhesion for our primer. If we miss out on this step, what's gonna happen is when our primer or any coat that we put onto the panel, it's just not gonna stick properly over time and it's gonna peel. So our preparation is key. That will about do it. After we do this, I'll go ahead and we'll clean once more. Once it's been sanded, there's gonna be dust and contamination on the surface. So we'll give it one more spray and one more wipe. And what that will do is remove some of that dust or get it all nice and clean. And then what we'll do is we'll take a tack rag to get it all ready for our next step, which is the primer coat. So this is a tack rag, and this tack rag is going to get any of the debris that is still on the surface. So when you have a tack rag, it's best to initially open it up completely because it needs to air out. And once it's been airing out for about 10 to 15 minutes, we'll go ahead and we'll lightly tack over the surface, and this will pick up the remainder of any of that lint. It is now officially ready for some primer. And once it's all clean, we're gonna be using a primer. Now this is a filler primer, and well, it won't fill up a lot of damage, so make sure it's prepared nice and evenly. What you wanna do with this is you wanna wait till you hear the little ball shaking. Once you hear it shaking and making noise, then you're gonna to wanna to shake it up for one minute. Do follow the instructions so it have the best opportunity at success. So we're gonna go ahead and put on about two or three coats until it's covered. So we'll start at the top and then we'll move down.
Notice how I'm not letting off the trigger really. I'm just keeping it going. This is gonna mean it's gonna be more even. The more even it is, the smoother it will lay down, the better the finish is gonna be. We can see it's a little bit stripy. That's just because it doesn't have enough coverage. We're gonna wait about a good five, 10 minutes, let it flash, let it kind of get a little bit dull. We'll put one more coat on it. And then from there, we'll show you how to get it ready for our paint. And we can see here that it's nice and flashed off. If we touch it, it doesn't have any transfer. So we're gonna apply one more coat and that'll be sufficient enough for we get ready for our sanding. Right there, that's gonna be sufficient enough. Let's give this a good half hour, let it really dry, and then we'll assess, we'll see if it's ready for sanding. And if it needs a little bit longer, then we'll make that decision. And a half hour later, we really sped things up with that Florida sun. Let's pull it in. I think it's ready to scuff and paint. And in case you guys are wondering, this stand is the Easy Flex by Flexible Tools. Now, if you're a do-it-yourselfer or at home and you don't really paint, you don't need it, but I'm telling you guys, if you are a professional, this stand really can do a lot between tailgates, doors, that type of thing. For at home use, you'll probably just use a horseshoe uh, stand and you'll be just fine. Since it's dry now, we're gonna take our same piece of sandpaper and some water and we're gonna lightly scuff the surface. The reason why is because I can feel a little bit of roughness and texture and all we want to do is basically use our K600 and just go over the surface and all we're really looking to do here with this K600 sandpaper is just smooth it out a little bit get it ready for the next step we want that base coat to lay as smooth as possible and it doesn't take much we're not getting too aggressive we're just covering all of our corners and making sure the primer has had a couple passes of the sandpaper. Let the sandpaper do the work for you. And here I'm using that same towel. I wrapped it over so I have a clean section. We're really trying to minimize and use as least possible materials and products that we can for the best possible finish at home. And next up, we're gonna be using a Sprayway glass cleaner. And I like this because, well, it's pretty much a stripped glass cleaner. It doesn't have any special scents. It's pneumonia free. And what we're gonna do is give it a little spray. Once we've sprayed it down, we'll just wipe it off. And the reason why I'm not using the prep cleaner here is it might be a little bit too aggressive for this um, 1K primer. And we don't wanna smear or reactivate the primer even though it's completely dried. I've run into that issue before. So let's just play it safe and let's use what we know works, okay? Rub this down so it looks dry. It's looking pretty good. And we'll let it flash continuously and it looks like we're ready for some base coat. Now we're ready for our base coat and we wanna make sure this comes out super, super clean. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is keep a small towel with you while you spray because aerosols like this, they build up with paint on the nozzle and that kind of spatters onto the panel and that could be such a big, big headache. We're gonna get started right now. We'll probably have to do about two to three, maybe four coats to get full coverage. We'll use our tack rag to get one final tacking before our base coat and we're ready to spray. Now we're gonna spray this differently. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna tack this in quadrants or sections. Now the reason why is it's hard to get a nice even finish and if we go a little bit at a time, we're gonna have a much better finish. So I'll do maybe one, two, and three, and then four down there, and we'll see how that works. So I'm staying about maybe three to four inches away, and I'm going very, very, very fast.
All right. We were just looking over this and yeah, you see these stripes? That looks like it would be a problem. And well, I'm gonna show you how to get yourself out of it. So now with our second coat, since we have pretty good coverage, we're now going to work a little bit slower, a little bit more of a distance. So we're gonna increase our distance now to maybe let's say four to five inches instead of two to three. And that's gonna start to hide all of these areas. The reasons why we have these areas is because this is where we overlapped and stopped, okay? So now we're gonna correct that, but first let's take our tack rag and let's lightly go over the surface. And we're ready for our second coat. After two coats and once it's dried, it dried a little bit darker and you can see that the lines are already starting to move away. Now, I'm gonna teach you a little trick here that really helps to get a smoother finish because with these spray cans, they start to get really dry. So I got my uh, K600, I got a new sheet and I'm just gonna go over the surface, right? And the reason why I'm doing that is, take a look in here, you can see it's just sanding all that away. And when I go over here, this is smooth, this is rough, okay? So we wanna smooth that all completely out. And once you do that, you're gonna get your tack rag and we're gonna wipe that off. So now our panel is much smoother. Let's put on another coat. For this coat, I'm gonna do what works best. We saw in our first coat, we went one, two, and three. Our second coat, we went over the whole panel. Do whatever works best for you. On this particular one, I'm gonna work quadrants, but a little bit more of a distance. And that looks like it covered really good. We're gonna allow this to dry a good 45 minutes, and then we're gonna start with our clear coat. Our fender's been drying for 45 minutes and it's ready for a clear coat. Now, before we used our tack rag, but since our base coat lands just a little bit rough, we don't wanna put this on the panel because it can make the panel a little bit more dirtier by picking up lint. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using our clear coat from Dupacolor. This is all the same brand, the same line from the very beginning, and we'll see what it looks like. Let's get started. We're ready to spray our clear coat. The way we're gonna put it on is pretty wet. Let's get rolling. So we get the first coat down. Now, as you saw, we were putting the first coat down and it looked good, but then as we were spraying it, it completely doled out. But what we need to do is add multiple coats of an acrylic lacquer, this is what we have here, to get the shine, but will it be good enough? Let's find out now, let's apply two more coats. After an hour, we can tell that, well, you know what? It just is not a good clear coat. Take a look at that. You have no gloss, really. You have reflections in some areas. 
In all honesty, this is not worth putting another can of lacquer acrylic uh, clear coat on. It's, we've already got about, what, $10 into the can. I wouldn't even buff this. There's not enough room to buff this. There's not enough material. But luckily, we have a solution. Well, the answer is very simple. This is 10 bucks, this is 20. For 10 more bucks, you're gonna get a much more superior clear coat. This clear coat is two part, and this will be the same exact clear coat that will come out of a spray gun. And if you come look over here, we can see that, you know, the acrylic lacquer is just not a good finish. Now, a lot of you will say, you can't put this urethane clear coat on top of acrylic, it's gonna peel. We've done it before, we haven't had any issues. I'm gonna show you what an amazing gloss this has. Let's go ahead and give this a scuff with our 600. We're gonna lightly scuff it, we're not gonna burn through, and that's gonna give us some adhesion for our clear coat. We can see that, you know, just this acrylic lacquer clear coat, we just wanted to show you that it's just not enough, right? The base is fine, right? That's our color. But the acrylic lacquer, it just does not spray well. It just does not hold its gloss. So we'll come over here. You can see that these sand scratches will be filled in no problem. And we don't need to go too rough on it. Here, we're just giving it just a little bit of a scratch. No pressure. No pressure. And that's gonna be good enough. And once again, we're gonna use our Sprayway glass cleaner because it's not too aggressive. We just wanna clean off the surface once more. And to get this clear coat ready, we'll take off the red cap on top. We'll go ahead and attach it to the stem on the bottom. And then it's good to push it against the floor. You'll hear a pop. That pop means a ticking time bomb. You have about a good hour, I would say an hour and a half. If you put it in the refrigerator, you'll get a little bit more time. But now you're gonna give it a good shake. And what, what's happening right now is the clear coat and a catalyst are mixing together. We'll shake it for about a good minute. So we're gonna apply about two to three coats. Now some of you might ask, well, since there's already clear coat on it, it's probably gonna come out much better. And that might help us, but if we use this stuff from the beginning, we would have been a lot better and saved money on that original clear coat. Now this stuff, you spray it on, it's got a much bigger fan. You wanna make sure you're wearing a mask here. You can see the gloss immediately is 100 times better. It's thicker, it's a better clear coat. It's not gonna die back. That means it's gonna hold its shine. The nozzle is better on it, okay? We're spraying it just like a regular clear coat finish. Do you guys see the difference immediately with just one coat? What we're gonna do here is gonna allow this to flash for a good 10 minutes and we're gonna put down another coat. That is beautiful. We see immediately the first coat looks beautiful, much better gloss. Now I'm gonna put another coat down, two coats. Now from this point, two coats will probably be fine, but if your project needs one more, that's okay. I want you to wait about 10 minutes in between coats. This time we're gonna put on a lot wetter. Beautiful. Look at that gloss. Go a little bit slower. Watch the clear coat go on. As you watch it go on, overlap around 75%. This thing is looking fantastic. All the way to the bottom. And we're going to leave it just like that. And this has been drying for a good 45 minutes. If you pan in, you take a look at the high gloss it has. This is nothing like you would ever see from a 1K product or that Dupa Color. Now the Dupa Color was great with the primer. It was great with the um, base coat, but it just does not deliver the type of results you would want. The clear coat, if you really get close, you can see this clear coat emulates a factory type finish the factory gloss level, and that is something that you can do right in your own home garage. Now, if you wanna take this a step further and cut out some of the peel, well, you could take it, sand it down with 2,000, 3,000 and buff it, but really, it looks stunning and it looks really, really flat. Well, 
well, just around 65 bucks from material if you can get from the store. And well, this guy you have to get on Amazon. Well, I gotta say that project looks superior and awesome. And we did it right from our home garage. Now, my recommendation, are you gonna do this to your whole car? I don't recommend it, but I know you guys are. If you do, be prepared. You're gonna spend a lot more money than you probably would if you just went to Mako and got a quick, cheap paint job. So that's my recommendation, and I hope you do take it. But if you got a project at home, this is something great that you can go ahead and give it a try on. Guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it. It's just paint. We'll see you guys on the next one.